What's going on, everybody? It's Edwin back again for Strictly Comics. And man, I have not been here in a while. But it's all good because it was well worth the wait. And I'm pretty sure you would agree, especially after I show you guys what I got to show you. I have a crap ton of books for like the next month. So I'm going to get right into it. Uh, first, I want to give a couple shout outs. Shout outs to a lot of guys who've been subscribing to me over the past month or so. Capped Wifflebat, My Escape World, Seeking NM Comics. Yeah, me too, bro. I'm seeking near mint comics too. <laughs> uh, Wadga, oh, Mad, Madga Rebel with a W. Tat Comics. What's up, Tat? Uh, Rage A, Rage A, the M. I, I assume it's an acronym of Rage Against the Machine. Sean Mitchell, shout outs to Unslabbed88. Shout outs to Gumba213. Shout outs to Bob0084. Thank you for subscribing. And finally, last shout out today will be to Andy Kruithoff. Kruithoff, thanks for subscribing, Andy. And thanks to everybody else who I gave shout outs to uh, before. Thank you so much for uh, subscribing to my channel. I hope that I'm continuing to make everybody happy. All right, so let's get right into this because I don't want to drag this on even though this is going to be a long freaking video. So get ready, get your popcorn ready, and you know what I'm saying, get your drink, your Mountain Dew, your Doritos. Let's get right into this. Uh, another thing, we're going to be doing auctions on the Comic Book Fanatics Facebook page. Comic Book Fanatics facebook page i will leave a link to that uh we got market 316 we got uh biggies comics enrique we got uh a few other people that are gonna be doing live auctions i watched some of that enrique did just the other day man he gave away like silver and bronze age books on the cheap so the more people the merrier if you guys want to check that out i'll leave a link in the description below please check out these live auctions uh, check me out on Instagram. My link is in the description below. Also, I am updating my eBay store and I got a crap ton of stuff on there already. And I got about two to 500 more items that I'm going to be putting on there over the course of upcoming weeks. So check that out. My prices are kind of high starting out, but that's just how I start out. Uh, if you guys have any interest in anything that I'm currently selling, please shoot me a message. I'm pretty sure I can work something out. Um, cause I'll gradually drop my prices as, uh, you know, as the, the longer they're on there. So, but anyways, enough, all these plugs. Uh, so this right here is just nothing. This is just a backdrop to hold up a lot of these awesome books uh, that I picked up. First, I'm going to go show you guys what I picked up for today for a new comic book day, Wednesday, December the 14th, 2016. Uh, first I picked up was reborn issue number three reborn has been pretty solid. Uh, there's still a lot more questions than answers, but I've been enjoying it, especially when it comes to Greg Capullo's artwork. Greg Capullo to me is a fantastic artist and he gave me the opportunity to interview him uh, a couple, two or three years ago. And you can just look through my videos. I did a, a little interview with him, but I uh, also picked this up TMNT number 65. What a fun cover, especially for this Christmas season that we are in right now. Man, that is an awesome cover. Like, I, I, I'm a huge Ninja Turtles fan, but I would have got that anyways just because of the cover. That is a sweet, sweet cover. So, all right, keep it moving, keep it moving. All right, next I got this right here. Uh, Deadpool, Back in Black, issue number five. If I'm not mistaken, this is the final issue of this little mini series run. I haven't read it yet because I'm so far behind on current comic books. Uh, that I knew that it was a five issue run. So I was just going to wait anyways until all five issues came out um, and just going to read it all at one. Love this cover. It's a, it's a Todd McFarlane swipe from Spider-Man issue 13 or 14, I think, which that also was a swipe of Spider-Man issue number one. <laughs> so anyways, but really, really cool cover. Love the humor that comes with Deadpool, especially when they put him in all these throwback covers absolutely love this next i picked up this right here spawn issue number 268 now i know a lot of people aren't reading spawn i'm still going to read it. i think i'm going to press on until issue 
300, 301, whatever the case may be. And that is an awesome cover. That is a sick cover. Now, my LCS put in the regular cover in the black and white. I, I didn't want, I didn't need two covers. But I almost grabbed the regular cover just because it's the same thing, but it's just all in color. That is a really, really cool cover. So uh, I'm really uh, enjoying Spawn still, so I was glad to have that. And the last book that I got for New Comic Day Wednesday today was Rockstar's issue number one. Um, don't know much about this, but when I read about it, I found out that it was a new team. This is their very first book ever, new artist, new writer, if I'm not mistaken. And I was like, you know, why not give it a chance? You just never know when it comes to image first. So I went ahead and picked this up. So that's it, you guys. That's all that I got for New Comic Book Day Wednesday today. Now, I got a crap ton of back issues to show you guys. So let's get into that. I got a lot of books, you guys. These are not going to be in any real particular order. Um, but starting out, I got Batman number, what is that? 315. Um, I got these books, these first uh, three books out of the dollar bin. Got that for a freaking dollar. That's right. I also got number 314 for a dollar. Uh, I'm really glad to have gotten these because, let me show you this one real quick. Number 279 for a dollar because I've really wanted to start a Batman run from like 500 on down. I don't need every single freaking Batman ever to be published, but 500 on down is is where I'm. It's kind of my sweet spot for me. So, but I got these for a dollar. Uh, this next book I actually got for a dollar. Also, couldn't believe it. And let me show you guys real quick. Bam! Again, see, I keep telling people. I say, see, my LCS. They went through like all their new inventory that they've got. They they just got this massive collection from some guy that was uh, kind of, he realized that he was spending so much money on storage and he just needed to get rid of some books. So I got this for a dollar. They overlooked it. Signed by Todd McFarlane, the Todd father, and Greg Capullo. And on the back of it, I got like a COA. Uh, it's actually from Phoenix Comic Con from 1995. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was kind of fun. And I'm a huge Todd McFarlane fan. So when I seen that, I was like, oh, snap. So I swiped that up and I actually got this currently for sale on uh, eBay. Um, so, yeah, really, really excited to get that. Uh, this next book I got during a Halloween sale, uh, X Factor number five. This is the first uh, cameo appearance of Apocalypse in the Shadows. Now, Man, this book is clean. I this is like some white supremacy ish going on right here with this book, as Mercenot would say. But this book is clean. Now I was kind of thrown off a little bit because they had it as like a nine point oh. Well, when I when I opened it up, I saw how clean it was. I realized that they were going by Overstreet nine point oh. And if anybody knows Overstreet, Overstreet doesn't go higher than a nine point two. So this book is so clean. It's in like a CGC standards. It's in like a 9.6, 8 condition. This thing is near flawless. And it's in Mylar and a uh, fullback board. So um, it's it's clean enough to where I, I'm confident it'd probably come back as a 9.8 if it got graded. But uh, I don't know if I'll do that. There's not really any, any – it's not really necessary to me. Apocalypse movie is over with. This right here will go in my personal collection because I actually didn't have this one. So, but I was really, really happy to get that. I got this for like, I got this for like 10 or 12 bucks, man. I couldn't believe it. 10 or 12 freaking dollars. Yeah. How do you love that? I'll just leave that beauty up there. Man, that thing is just, y'all don't even understand just how clean this book is. All right. All right. Let me shut up. Uh, next, I got this right here. Bam! Silver Age, the Amazing Spider-Man issue number 29. I think that this is like the second appearance of the Scorpion. Uh, my LCS, again, came across this massive collection. And um, he, he a part of that collection, he found a 
Amazing Spider-Man issue number one. He was so happy to have gotten it that he actually gave me this for guess how much? Guess how much? He gave me this for ten dollars. Now it's not in the greatest shape. It's probably like a you know VG. It's got a little bit of chipping, but um, other than that, I mean you're you're not gonna get books in in this age very nice unless you're just gonna come out your pockets to get it. And to me, it's not really necessary because, I mean, you're looking at a book that's over 50 years old. And uh, as long as it's intact and it's not too terribly beat up, I'll I'll, I'll seek to get these type of books. But for $10, I didn't even go in there looking for this book. And I just was kind of thumbing through it. And I just happened to ask him how much, even if he said like 20 or 25, I probably would have picked it up. But uh, any more than that, I would have just left it. But he said ten bucks. I was like, "Sold! <laughs> Give it to me now, man!" So, so I took it. Um, so yeah, got that for ten bucks. All right. Uh, these next ones, most of these next ones, are all a part of the Halloween sale that I had. Um, you know, a few weeks back, uh, I got this one right here. Daredevil, Man Without Fear, issue number one eighty two. I guess that this is the. Death of Electra. I don't know a whole lot about Daredevil. Didn't really read a lot of Daredevil, um, but I know that she uh, dies by uh, Bullseye. I think this might be an issue or two after that happens. I'm not really sure, but I picked that up. Um, I think I got that for like. I think I got that for like a dollar. Yeah, I think I got that for like a dollar, uh, and then I got this. I think I got this for like a couple bucks. Daredevil issue 177. Uh, next, I picked this up. Uh, I got this for a dollar. Action Comics number 432. Uh, the reason why I got this is because this is actually the first, is it Bronze Age appearance of the new Toy Master? That's like the old Toy Master, and then this is like the new one. I read this book, and it was kind of silly. Um, he wants to be the new Toys Master, but the old Toy Master is offended because this amateur is, you know, dragging his name through the mud, making his name look bad by calling himself the um, the, the the Toy Man or Toy Master. And uh, so he kind of teams up with Superman to catch the, 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 the amateur and ends up catching him after not being seen for like, I don't know how many years, but it was a pretty decent read. I mean, it. It, you know these these older comics to me are just just as enjoyable uh as the as the new ones if not better so i grabbed that okay so next i picked up the uncanny x-men annual number 12 uh just you know i just really enjoy the artwork i think is a is it john Byrne or not john Byrne, but um and i forget his name but anyways i picked that up and then i also got annual number 13 um, I got both of these for like a dollar, you know, couldn't pass it up. Plus they're all, they're both in a super high grade anyway. So I was like, eh, why not? Okay. Next I'll show this, uh, uncanny 267. I think I got this for like, yeah, I got this for like a dollar. Also, this is like Gambit's, uh, second appearance. So. I've already got like a couple of these already, but you know, all these books are in such high grade and they were so cheap. They're like a dollar less than, well, no, they were cover price. So I got them for a dollar, but pick that up. Okay. So I picked up uncanny 258. I got uncanny 257. The reason why I picked these is because I didn't have the full three issue run of the introduction of the new Psylocke ninja Psylocke. So I went ahead and grabbed these. Um, I also got Uncanny issue 251. Man, these are such clean copies. These things are just in really, really high grade. Um, I remember seeing this comic as a kid. It was kind of an iconic cover, Wolverine being crucified. I haven't read any of these, um, but I am trying to complete an Uncanny run of like 300 on down. So I went ahead and grabbed these for a buck. Okay, so keep it going here with Uncanny 248, the very first Jim Lee artwork in the Uncanny X-Men. 
Very nice copy. Super nice copy. I have another one, but it's signed by Jim Lee. I think it's signed by him. Um, so I decided to grab another one. And then I also got number 244, First Jubilee. I've always wanted this book, but I could never um, seem to get it. Now, before the movie was announced, I mean, you could get this book for 10 bucks all day. And then, of course, once she was announced in the Apocalypse movie, I mean, people wanted like 20, 30. I think I've even seen some go as high as 40 on eBay. I'm like, man, there's no way I'm paying that much. I got this book for $10. Um, it's in a good enough grade for me to spend 10 bucks on. Uh, but hey, now I have a copy, you know, first appearance of Jubilee. Um, I also grabbed another one of these. Uh, first appearance of Forge, the Uncanny X-Men number 184. This is like my third copy, but this is like the nicest of the three. The other two are kind of beat up a little bit. Um, and I think they're done by John Romita Jr. And I think I got him to sign one of them. So, But this one is much nicer, so I'll grab that. All right, and last but not least, I got the Uncanny, uh, the Uncanny, <laughs> the Uncanny X Men one thirty one. This is a early uh, White Queen Emma Frost appearance. I don't, I don't think it's her first appearance. I think her first appearance is in like one twenty nine or one thirty. But either way, th this is a very highly desirable uh, issue. Um, these usually sell pretty quick. I think 130 or 129 is the first appearance of Dazzler. Um, but, I, I mean, what did I pay for this? I think I got this for like like 10 or 15, but it's in really high grade. Um, so I went ahead and snagged that up. Uh, and then let me see what else we got here. Bam! Next I got one of these. Now, if anybody watches my videos, you know that I'm not really into variant covers. But, okay, Venom is one of my favorite characters. Uh, this is also a Todd McFarlane variant copy. Now, I'm excited that they had a Todd McFarlane uh, cover, but this is an ugly cover. This is a swipe from Amazing Spider-Man issue 299, the very last page, which shows Venom's full appearance. And Venom, in my opinion, got much better. Throughout the years, even with Todd McFarlane, he got a little bit better, much better, really. But I, I I just look at it more along the lines of Marvel or Disney was just so cheap that they didn't even want to pay Todd McFarlane to do a variant, which would have probably blown this one out of the water. But guess how much I got this book for? You guys will never guess. OK, so let me set this up. I was away in Michigan during the Thanksgiving Day holidays. I was visiting some family, and I decided to go to some of my LCSs that I used to go to out there. One of them shut down, so I went to, like, my number two spot. And this guy has a crap ton of variants. The only problem with his variants is that a lot of the variants that are that are worth nothing, you know, the same price as the regular covers, they always up the price. They up the price by, like, you know, a couple, two or three bucks. Some of them are as high as 10 or $15. And I'm like, man, these books ain't going to sell. And sure enough, I mean, he had long boxes of variants still at the same price that they had them at when they were, you know, coming out on New Comic Day Wednesday. So I decided to see if he had any because I wanted some of the Venom number one covers, but I didn't want the regular cover. I didn't care for the regular cover. I was actually looking for more like the Clayton Crane or Mark Bagley. Um, well, he showed me that he had this and I was like, for reals, I asked him, I said, how much <laughs> he said seven fifty, and, and, and he gave me that one. And then the first one that I showed you for seven fifty seven dollars and 50 cents. So I got both of these for like $15. I couldn't believe it. I was like, my mouth kind of dropped. I'm like, that's all you want. No, I didn't ask him that, but I'm thinking like, that's all you want. And so I said, all right, fine, I'll take these. And then I kind of let him hang on to him so I could look and see what else that he had. And I was like, yo. And to be honest with you guys, even this book still today is still holding up at about 120, 140, uh, 150 on up, depending on the condition. And guys, this this comic is flawless. It was in near flawless condition. It's like a 9698. 
Um, I'm still debating on whether or not I should keep it because variants, 99% of variants tend to just drop in price and never, uh, you know, hold their value. But, you know, you're talking about three weeks from three weeks now and it's held its value so far. Uh, I'm such a huge Venom and McFarlane fan. That would be the only reason why I would keep it regardless of if the value drop. Now, I only got I only got eight bucks into it. So that would also be one of the biggest reasons why I would keep this book. But, um, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. But still, man, for for seven fifty eight bucks. Man, you can't beat that with a stick. And see, the thing is, the guy didn't know what he had, and I sure wasn't about to tell him. Um, and he's like one of those mom and pop shops, and not very up to speed with the internet, eBay, current market value, all this other stuff. So, I mean, I, I had this debate with my other YouTube buddies on whether or not you should let a shop know. And part of me is like. I want to, but then once you let them know, they're going to be attentive to all the upcoming variants, therefore possibly eliminating myself from getting any more deals in the future. And then also a uh, big shout out to the to, to Buckshot 33, uh, Boston Chris. He made a really good point. He was like, it shouldn't be the customer's responsibility to let a shop know what they have or what they don't have. It should be their responsibility to know what they have. And I was like, you know what? True enough. <laughs> you just sold me. So good point. So anyways, I got that. Uh, and then my last book, which is the mother. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing this haul right now, I'll show you guys why real quick. Okay. So let me set this up real quick. All right. So again, I was visiting my family and I have a little brother. Shout out to Gabe. Gabe, if you're watching, shout out to you. I had to get this in a video before I send it off to get it cleaned and pressed and graded. Um, my little brother Gabe said that his cousin gave him some comic books. And he wanted me to kind of look through them. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. I'd you know, love to see what you got. And I kind of knew there were going to be like a lot of 90s stuff. And sure enough, they were. All of them, most of them were 90s comics. And he had a lot of doubles also. Uh, but as I was flipping through it, I was, I seen this, I was like, oh snap. <laughs> and it's a newsstand copy. Also, I, I told him, I was like, do you know what this is? <laughs> I was like, this is the very first appearance of Harley Quinn. I was like, this is a hot book. I told him, I was like, man, I'll give you $200 for this book right now. Uh, and I would have, because I was going to get it cleaned and graded and, and pressed and all that stuff, uh, and then resell it. Uh, but then his mother, my my stepmother, my mother Pearl, suggested that, um, you know, she want she wanted to do it for Gabe to get it cleaned and pressed and and graded, and she would pay the cost and get it done. I was like, you know what, that's a really good idea because uh, Gabe doesn't know what he has, and it will be an investment for him. And you know, if he ever wants to sell it in the future, he has. That. Let me just say this, you guys. This book right now, raw, it's in like 9.4, 9.4 condition near mint. This easily, uh, once it gets graded, as a, if it comes back as a 9.4, it'll be about a $600 book, six $700 book. Um, if it comes back as a 9.6, I think they're about $800. They're worth about eight dollars $900. Um, if it comes back as a 9.8 after a good cleaning and pressing, it, you're looking at a you're looking at it being worth about seventeen hundred to two thousand dollars. So uh, she suggested that, and I thought it was a good idea. I was really happy for him. I couldn't believe it. I was looking to see if he had any more, and of course he didn't. He actually had Batman Adventures number eleven, two number elevens, but only one number twelve. I was like, oh my god! Like your cousin don't even realize what he gave you. Uh, but everybody knows what this book is. This book is super hot right now. It's through the roof. It, it, to me, it's at a, it's, it, it's point to where it's unreachable unless you just want to spend that kind of money. I wouldn't do it. But with the success of Suicide Squad and with all the potential in the world for Harley Quinn, um, I don't see this book losing its value anytime soon. And plus, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this book doesn't have a high print run because I don't think a lot of people were into the Kitty Batman comic books. It's more like a Mega Man or Looney Tunes type of uh, genre 
comic book, so I don't think this had a ridiculously high print run, print run, but but yeah. Anyways, you guys, that is it. That is all that I got. Please make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, check me out on Instagram. Check out my eBay store. Both of them are in the description below. Keep God first in your life. Enjoy your comic books. And God bless you guys. Have a great night.